I'm Julie Hopp, and I teach in Michigan, where last week, not this week, but last week it was minus four one day. Um, so I'm thoroughly enjoying not having to use chapstick this week. And um, I'm here to share with you information about uh, Chrome extensions. I, I teach in the classroom, and if anything I can find that makes it go easy, uh, makes it easier, makes it one less click for me. I am all about that. So um, I happen to start, I'm also a curator by nature. Um, my Pinterest has over almost 2,000, I think, pins related to math, you know, every part of Common Core math and, you know, Marzano and CITW and computers and you name it, I'm pinning, I'm pinning it. So I started to collect a lot of extensions and um, then saw some articles, which I uh, cited at the very end, if you want to go read the articles. There's a, there's a handful, and des decided to apply to share it, and I was accepted, so here I am. Um, uh, this, there are, there's a lot more to Chrome than what I'm showing you. I'm just showing you a lot of things that I use, and peri periodically throughout will show you some of, you know, how I use it as well, okay? Let me see. Go to the next page. So I'm going to start with the extensions that I love. And these are there all the time for me. And I have to switch over to my internet. Well, it's showing Chrome, but it's not showing my, my tab. We have to unplug, at our school, we have to unplug certain wires and plug them back in and then and it, it'll start to work. So while he works on that. The first one that I was going to show you, or am going to show you when I have the opportunity, is called Context. And because over time I ended up with so many extensions, and you can't, you can't organize them normally the way that you would in, excuse me, in um, like your bookmarks. And so eventually you have no omnibar left. And I had more than that, even. So um, I ended up coming across somebody who recommended context. I try it. I tried it, and it allows me to organize my extensions so that I can then, um, when I want just my Google extensions, I can have my Google extensions. I can empty it out so there's no extensions up there. I can, there we go. I can um, make it. Uh, I have certain extensions I use all the time, so I pull those up. Thank you so much. So, except for, it's not zoomed right. Let me see. Let me go back to Chrome. So here's, here is what's con called context. And I have the different extensions. If I want them to go away, I click this one. And it's very simple to use. I want the ones, I want certain ones to always show up, and I will click my always. And those ones are the ones I use the most often. Okay, I can, I can see that the list is not um, very large for you to see, but if you, t you can see that I, you can have your extensions in multiple places as well. So the ones that I haven't always include um, things that might be for in the one that I love, like the, the, the one that corresponds with my presentation today, which is love. The first ones that I wanted to show you were the ones that I love. And so it can be in both places. It works very simply. You click this, and you have, that. You have your list. If you right click, you get to options, and all of the extensions that you have become available to you. So these are the extensions that I have. I have a lot of them. And I don't use all of them. I go and try them out, and then I end up using the one that I like best. Uh, I, choose, I like to have the highlighted the ones, highlight the ones that are not in the extension, or, or are not in a um, 
group, just to make sure I'm not forgetting something. But then down below, uh, you can see the different groups, and you just slide them into the, the place that you want them. You can also uh, sync this. So if I go onto another computer, Chrome itself syncs, right, automatically. But this is not actually Chrome. It's an extension for Chrome. So they set this up you, for you to be able to save what you have here. And then when you go to, say, your computer, like this is my home computer. When I'm at work, I click, on, I click the load from server. So I've saved it here, then I get to, so I'm using the, the same setup wherever I go. If I make a change at one place, I save it, and then I can load it at the other. Yes? It, there's at the bottom, there's new context. You click that, and you start out, you have to choose an icon, but you can also set it so that it will use the first icon in the list as well. I, is that bugging? Yes, thank you. This is, I think, my second time ever presenting. It's new for me. Um, well, like I said, I'm a curator, so I read and I look. And one of the articles that I cited, I think it was, it was you know, oh, the 10 best extensions a teacher should have, something like that. And so I, I read it, and I went and tried the different ones. And this was one of them in one of those lists that I read. And I, and I loved it because I'm an organizer, and it organized me, and it let me have the ones I wanted. Now, I came up with doing empty, because sometimes I just want it to go, I want everything to go away and start fresh. I don't know how Google decides that they're going to put these in here. I don't, because it's not necessarily the order in the list, and so I, have to, I can't find what I'm looking for, and that's no good if I can't find it, <laughs> so I want to use it. So um, I, I came up with the empty. They have an always enabled extensions right here. And if you put something there, it won't show up in any of the other lists. It'll always be on. Um, the reason why this also becomes useful is that every single extension uses a little bit of memory. And eventually, when you have this many extensions, you, your, net, your internet starts to slow down. And I, you know, I'm teaching and it's, there's already things that make it slow. I have a seven-year-old computer in my classroom that's already making it slow. So I, I want to not, I want to keep it from slowing down as best I can. So when I, in using this, anything I turn off will not be using memory. Okay, only the ones that are on will use memory. So that's my interest. Uh, you know, it, it, it freed up the memory. I could see them and I could organize them. So I'm not going to go through all of them this thoroughly though, but this one is just exceptionally useful to me. There are probably other ones out there. There is one that I um, listed if when, when I'm done and I put everything on the website. You'll see there's one called Extensity and it does a similar thing. I don't like it as well. Maybe you will. Uh, you know, we have different ways of, of organizing, so you might like it. So I included it. Some of the things, um, I just put the one thing because I have so many I want to show. All right, moving. Uh, any questions on this one? Yes. Well, when I, when I first installed Context, when you click on, when you right click and go to Options, then it'll come up with your list, and you won't have any. You won't have anything down here. You'll have nothing down here. Yep. All right. Then let me move on to the extensions that I love. Okay. So first, or one of one of the extensions I use quite often. I use. Uh, I use a learning management system and do almost all of my stuff online. I teach technology to 6th, 7th, and 8th graders. And um, in doing that, I mean, it's been wonderful in, in many ways, but when I need to give comments, I was finding I was only giving them negative comments because 
It just took too much to write it every single time. And I couldn't just do copy-paste because there were different things I wanted to write. And so um, I used, I found this, again, one of those lists. All of the, most of these came from one of those lists that I read about the 10 most, the 20 most, the whatever. Um, what this allows you to do is, let me turn, let me turn that, those extensions on. Let me go to empty, then turn those on. What the uh, text expand, auto, it's called Auto Text Expander. And what it does is when you click in this, you can set your shortcuts. And these are just ones I set. And I set NJN to be, to be nice job. So when I am going through and I'm grading and I have to click and I want to put a comment, I have certain ones that are just positive comments that I can just go, NJN. Or common things when I'm teaching, when we're starting to do stuff with video, is they'll turn the project file in and not the video file. So I'd be writing all this stuff. And it also, um, I'd have to look more into it, but I think you can also do things where, um, no, that's not this one, excuse me, sorry. <laughs> so very useful to me because I'm always having to type things and it, and it allowed me to give more positive comments because I wasn't just, I wasn't having to hand type everything, it went faster, therefore I had more time. Okay, I included two from Pinterest because like I said, I'm a Pinterest gal and I don't know how many others in, uh, out there are using it. I curate all of my materials. Um, there's Ed Saver down here is also that kind of thing, but Pinterest works for me. Sometimes you go to a website though and there's not an image and it won't allow you to, or it's a video and it won't allow you to. This uh, extension called Shot Pin allows you to take a screenshot of the page that you're on and then we'll use that as the image to pin. So if I choose that and I click the check mark, it'll then allow me to pin that page, that image that I just took a screenshot of. And I find that very useful again for the web pages where I can't pin it. This lets me, this almost always, periodically there's a site it won't work on, who knows these things. Uh, Google has certain things blocked or something isn't programmed the right way. But um, where did my internet go? Did I just close it? I think I just closed it. Come on. Well, we are just having lots of fun with this today. No, nope, that's not it. Anyone out there an Apple user? I, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, here's another one I, oops, that I love. And when I give you the link to this, each one of these little marks, each one of these little circles is actually also a link to the page in Chrome. Um, if you would like to install the Chrome Web Store. So this one, I'm a gentleman, that's the name of it, I don't know why. Uh, what it allows me to do is when I see a picture that I just click and drive sideways, or slide it sideways, doesn't matter which way, up, down, sideways, and it immediately goes to download the image. I use images a lot, I find that very helpful. It just saves me time, that's what you know, that's what I was really looking for, for in this presentation, was to show you things that save you time. Go, excuse me? It's called, I'm a gentleman. So, and like I said, all of this is gonna be available to you. You don't have to, um, in, in fact, what I should do right now is show you my Twitter. Uh, if you go to Twitter and, um, follow me, what I'm going to do is send out a tweet with the link. 
so you don't have to, but if you want to. And then you can, it, it'll, it comes up to all of, you know, it has all the information, so you don't have to write it all down. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. It's Hop House, so H-O-P-P-H-A-U-S. Thank you. I didn't think to do that. Um, I'm also on Pinterest at um, Hop House 2. Hop House 1 is my husband, and he never uses it, but he's Hop House 1. Grammarly. How many of you have used Grammarly or heard of Grammarly? Okay, wow, I thought everybody in our school uses it. The kids all use it. It basically is, you know, an inline um, spell checker, grammar checker, thesaurus, and so forth. Um, that, that one, especially with the special needs kids, is so useful for them. And, excuse me? Grammarly? So grammar and then L-Y. The next one called Tab Cloud. Uh, I heard of a new one this morning, which I actually like a little bit better, called uh, Session Buddy. But they both allow you to um, keep track of all the tabs that you have open. OK? And then you can actually name them. So earlier today, I was sitting in Kathy Schrock, and I, and I um, had multiple tabs open. And I didn't want to have to go bookmark each one, because I don't, you know, I don't need to. I just, next week sometime, I'm probably going to want to go back to the website and look things over. I can come here and click this, uh, click the plus sign, and then it'll open up all those tabs. Easy to use. For instance, if I wanted to use save this right now, I just click the little save button. You do have to log in, and it goes through Google. So this one is called um, one. Uh, it's called Tab Cloud. Tab Cloud. Yep. I wish I, I wish it was easier to go between. The idea of the presentation was I was going to go between because the one had each one listed out, and then I could come back here and show you how it works. But I think it's, more, it's better for me to be able to show you how it works, and, because you can get the names of it later. All of the, that, the PowerPoint that has all the names will also be included. So, um, Tab glue and tab scissors, they are, are, are pretty useful for, divide, for splitting up a web page. You have 10 tabs open, and now you're going to do a search for horses, and you're like, oh my god, I can't keep track of it. I just click the, the scissors, and it'll split that off. I could do it in the middle if I put it right here on shot pin, and I don't know if it'll do. Sometimes the Google Sites it works differently, and I click that, and it's going to divide it and put those tabs separate. To go back together, I click the glue, and now all of the pages are back together. Go full screen, and you can see the shot pin and those two others are back together. Screencastify, when I first originally set this up, it was free. I believe there is a fee for it now. I'm not sure because I don't want to uninstall it to, and then have to reinstall it to find out because I might have to then pay. I don't know. But I, I heard it was, there was a fee for that. Uh, one click timer. I've been using this for a long time. Actually, I learned from a master over here in the CITW classes um, about timing. And it has, it has been really useful. I, I tell the kids, they're going to be talking amongst each other, they're going to be discussing something, and they'll have one minute to do it. And I can set this, and it just starts counting down. And then it has a little bell, you know, it has a annoying noise at the end. It's, it's not quite a bell. It's not startling or anything. You can stop it at any time, and it's just right there. I don't have to go get an app and then open up the app, and then, which is what I was doing before. I, was, I had you know, these different devices. Here, it's right here. Um, when we, we do a writing program, they have to write for 11 minutes. Turn it on. The kids know 
how much time they have to try and finish up their story, so on and so forth. Um, another favorite is awesome screenshot. I do a lot of screenshots, and it is easy to use. It has an advanced editor if you want to use it, and um, it's, it's like anybody here use Snagit or anything like that? It's like that, but it only works for web pages, basically. Whereas with Snagit, you can use for, for any, any screen. Snagit is expensive. Snagit is more like $50 or something to purchase it, um, whereas this is free. All of what I look for is free. If it costs something, I don't end up looking. I don't go to it. Now, I, some things have become, there's two, the Screencastify and one other, I think, that now has a fee. But um, when I try them out, if they cost money, I'm not doing it. I don't make enough money, <laughs> so I don't. There's a couple other I wanted to show you that, um, and this is, you know, I mean, this, this one, it wasn't on there because I hadn't originally known about it. It's called Panic Button. And I like this because it's the kind of thing where if you're in the middle of something and a student walks in and it's not something that, that you know, like maybe you're writing an email and you click um, the Panic Button, which I just did accidentally, and it basically goes to a a plain screen. I mean, just whatever was a single, and then, but you don't lose what it was, what you were doing. You just click the, the panic button again, and you're back to where you were. Um, again, kids walk in. You're in the middle of writing an email. My presenter was turned on. I, you know, or I have grades up. There's times things happen, and so um, that one is a, you know, I found that one to be a useful one as well. Um, there were a couple more. Uh, oh, Roll App File Opener. This one, uh, Roll App File Opener. That won't be in the presentation, so you might, if you want to write that one down. Uh, again, being a curator, I'm looking for things. I'm, I'm trying to find um, documents. And so I'm going to, uh, I can look at a document online without having to download it. But downloads were getting crazy. Because I, I'd want to see something, I'd have to download it, look at it, and then decide if I want to keep it. What this does is, I went, if there's a document that is downloadable, you hover over it, and you can choose to download it right then, or you can choose to um, uh, look at it, and it'll open it up in a in a browser window, and then you can decide if you want to want to actually download it. Okay. On to my next group. Am I doing okay so far? Okay, I'm, I'm a little nervous. All right, so now I'm gonna open up the Google ones. Some of these are pretty, you know, straightforward, I don't, but I don't know if you use them or not. Um, these two right here, one is called send from, G from uh, no, one is called send from Gmail and one is called email this page. They work similarly, the send from Gmail only works with Gmail or a school, uh, if you're on uh, Google Apps for education, school. Like my email is, you know, juliehop at romeo.k12.mi.us, that whole thing, but it's handled through Google, so it'll work with that account as well. It allows, if I wanted to send this page right here, I would just click it and it would come up with my mail and with a web page started. One click, boom, it's all there. And with the link in it already. If I highlighted text, it would highlight the it would put the text that I highlighted in as well. I'm gonna trash that because I don't want it. Leave this page. And this one does this pretty much the same thing, but it's for it, it'll hook into I think Outlook. Um, I don't know of any others, but it might. Okay. And this one is just a little email counter. I just clicked it, not meaning to. And for instance, you can see up here I have oh, oh, 71. Oh, you probably can't see, I'm sorry. I have 71 emails I haven't looked at. <laughs> Been gone a couple days from school. Um, and that one is called, um, oh, I'm going to have to look now, Google Mail Checker. 
oh, maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll just click each one, and then you can see exactly what it is, and I don't have to, and you can see it better. The next, the next Google is to save text from a web page into your Google. And I didn't put the link on that one. Um, so, so it allow it saves text and um, allows you to uh, just get the text. You know, page, web pages have you know there's the text right here, and then there's all this other stuff. You get just the text. Okay. This is called. I gotta find it. It is called Save Text to Google Drive. I could present from here too. The next one looks like it's just Google Drive, but it's called Save to Google Drive. I love this one. I use it. Love, 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 love this one. Would have put it in my loves, but it was a Google, so I put it with Google because I have to organize a certain way. Um, but I, I have a, if there is a picture I, and I want to save it to my Google Drive, I right click and I save it. If it's a web page, there's just, it, it adds a, to your context menu. If it's on a PDF file and there's a link to a PDF file, you click on, you right click on the link and it'll save that, whatever document that is, a word, whatever kind of document it is, well, if it's a downloadable file, it'll save it. As memorial services go, I thought that was very nice. Yes. Yeah. Do I have some video starting up? The flowers sure were beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, you know that arrangement yes. they had? <laughs> I'm like, I'm hearing something. The next one is called Docs Quickly, and that's this one. It um, allows you to just on the fly create a Google document, spreadsheet, or um, drawing. I still hear something. Nope, just my imagination. Black menu for Google Drive. I use this one all the time. It was for, uh, it also on the fly lets you um, go look at, not just create, but go look at. Here's the, here's the interface. This one is now a paid, pro, uh, paid, I don't know what the pay is, I don't know what it costs because Again, I'd have to uninstall it, and I didn't want to do that because I was afraid I'd have to still pay for it to get it back. Okay, so I can go and I can see what's on my YouTube, what's in my Gmail. You know, I can go to my Drive if I want to. I haven't set it up to do that yet. Uh, Google URL shorteners. Of course, there's many of those. This one works for me. Um, it just you click it and it shortens the page up. You can copy that, you know, and, and so forth. Am I, how am I doing on time? Do you know what time? Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna go fast here. Hangouts, another useful one. If you use that, that might be useful to you. I don't know. Instead of having to go into Hangouts and set it all up, you just click your little Hangouts and you can schedule one or set one up. Hey, let me do it again. So that's, if you use that. Another one, this one I use quite a bit called, um, it's Chrome Web Store Launcher. It looks like the web store up in the browser. And when I click on it, I can save up to five apps that I use a lot. So I don't have to constantly go through apps and then go to the right page and all that kind of thing. You also have a quick link to the web store itself which I inadvertently at some time deleted my web store link. And so this was my only way to get to the web store. All right. Has anybody else used anything for Google that you like a lot that you, yes? Oh, nice. Nice. Chrome Dialer. Anyone else? Chrome Dialer. Anyone else? Okay. Here's useful ones. Um, readability, clearly they both do very similar things, but clearly is through Evernote. 
uh, readability. Uh, they both just make the website clean. Um, Easy Bib, a lot of uh, a lot of the kids, all of our LA uh, teachers, our language arts teachers, uh, have the kids put this on, and, and it cites. If you're on a web page and you're going to use that web page, it creates the um, site, and it has different formats. If you want to pay, I think it uses APA style. I'm not positive. It might be the Chicago. What? Yes, Easy Bib. Okay. Well, okay, yep, let me move on. Screen Leap. I don't know if this is a current change. I hadn't used it in a while. It is a nice program to do a screenshot. It's not in my screenshots section, though, because um, originally I used it, for instance, my idea was to share my screen so that you would all be looking at it on your own devices. At some point, I was, a lot, I was able to do that free. Now I can do it for eight people for free. If I want more than eight people, it costs money. And um, so that wasn't useful to me today, but in, in the past I was able to do it. it also, but I kept it in here because it is, an, it is also a very nice uh, screen capture utility. Um, EdSaver, anybody heard of EdSaver? It's a curation, sort of, but it actually saves um, entire lessons and lets you keep, if you come across a lesson you like, you can keep that entire lesson. And it, it's basically a curator. Tab Carousel, any of you a Google, pro, uh, Google school? Okay, so Tab Curator is our current answer to being able to keep track of what the kids are doing when they're supposed to be working on a document. And how it works is you open up in you, you know, they obviously, well, not obviously, we have them, have their, their documents are all shared with us. And then we open all the documents and it will, based on what setting you set every five seconds, every 20 seconds, however you want it, it'll go between the documents. So you can see, you know, what user and what they're doing, what user and what they're doing. And if they happen to be on a, you know, not on that document, you can also see that as well. That's called Tab Carousel. And one of my favorites, and they are actually here from um, New Zealand, Notable PDF, the three people who developed this. Notable PDF, it does tons of things, one of which is to take any page and turn it into a PDF which I need regularly. I don't, I cannot rely on my network. Um, it, 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 whether it's Google or whether it's the network, there's times it goes down. Everything, if it's on a web page and I'm gonna be sharing that web page with my students, I save it as a PDF and um, then have access to it at a later point if I need it for backup. There's a lot more that it does, but I'm, I'm running out of time. And then the last two were the context and the extensity. Extensity is the other, um, another curation tool for your extensions. But I don't use it, I don't care for it as much. It's, it's just different, you may like it, okay? Those are not the only ones I had. That I, I also had um, a whole list of different tab organizers like the one that I use is Tab Cloud, but they all work in a different way. For instance, if you are, you know, a folder type, you know, person from a Windows user and are used to that kind of thing, the Tabs Outliner takes your tabs and creates an outline version of all your tabs so that you can access them easily and turn them on and turn them off. Um, the, the suspender, it's okay, but it, it, it um, Sometimes, you know, you, it, it suspends something and I didn't want it suspended because I got, took longer than I thought. You set a time limit on it. Color pickers, these are three that I use a lot when I'm creating things. I, you know, I want to match up colors, so these are extensions. All, all three of them work in different ways. I like all three of them for different reasons and don't have a lot of time. Here's the special ed one I thought, and let me see if I can get over there. Um, the one that I really like 
is this one called Web Fonto. And for me, being someone who has gotten older and I can't see very well, I, it allows me to change the font. It's not, a, it's not a perfect program. Sometimes it takes a long time to load when at the very beginning of the day, well, the first time I use it. But it, it does allow you to set the font very large if you want. And to any font that you want. So if you go to a web page, there's certain fonts that are easier for some people to read. And it lets you choose. There's, there's I won't say hundreds. There's probably 50 different fonts to choose from. Um, some, uh, there's, there's two main types of, of, of fonts, one for, that's better for print and one that's better for the internet. And some people don't know that and put the wrong kind of font on. Another one that is, is real nice is the open dyslex dyslexic. And that one just adds a little bit of shape to each letter, to, all, to certain letters. And they claim that it makes it easier for dyslexic people. I don't know. I'm, not to, you know, I'm slightly dyslexic, but not enough to need something like that. Um, but it looked quite usable. Originally, I had these different ones for Speak It, but Chrome now, and I don't know if it was there before and didn't know about it, but Chrome has something called Chrome Speak or Chrome Speak It, and it's just, it's in their context menu. I gotta find some words. It's not in here today. Yes, thank you. <laughs> and, and it- A menagerie of Chrome extensions. So, that one is just through Chrome. It's not an extension. So these are, those other ones are kind of, you know, not necessary because that one works very well. It'll only do a couple sentences at a time. So, you know, because I would highlight the whole paragraph and then it would stop partway through. But wonderful for your non-readers who have to have stuff read to them. It reads it to them. So, um, Excuse me? This, this is right, this is not an extension. It kind of, uh, it, it made the ones that I chose, which none of them work as well. Although one of these, and I don't remember which, because I stopped using it, because Chrome was there, will actually record an MP3 for you. Okay. So, um, I was hoping that at the end we would, if you had Chrome extensions that you used and liked, that you would share them with us. Um, any, I know you shared the, the one. Any others that you'd like to share or any questions that you have? I, I mainly use uh, Schoology as my learning management system. Google Classroom works for me basically as a way to send out files. That's about all I use it for. I, some people in our building use it a little bit more than that. It doesn't do most things that I need it to do. So it does allow me to have all of their files already shared with me in one folder. And I don't have to, it, when I first started, when we first went to Google and we didn't have, and I didn't have that, and it didn't actually exist yet, um, you know, I'd have to have the kids make sure to share it with me. And there's always, you know, 35 kids in the class, there's always two or three that didn't share it with me. You know, and then I have to go through and check, and then, did they name it the right way? This puts their name into it, the, you know, the, the, the name of the file, whatever I can give them, it actually puts their name in it. So, or you have the option to have them just copy a document if you want, or just look at a document, but other than that, so I use it, but I just use it as a tool rather than the whole system. Yes? One, I don't know which one it is. I believe one of these three, um, one of them does record. There's another one, and you know, I have so many, I start losing track of what one does what. But the Screencastify also picks up the microphone. So you can use that 
and, and have the voice with it. It's going to pick up what's on the screen. It's not, it doesn't, what? I don't know that one. What's it called? Kaizana. Okay. Kaizana. This is a um, technology expert in our county. <laughs> Let me I, let me see if I can show the 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 link. Where is my power? If I open up the PowerPoint, there's a link on there, um, a shortened link if you want it. But I'm I'll send it out with flip through um, Twitter if you want. I don't want this. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.